the Mountaineer Sports Network. Senior tailback A.B. Brown is on a roll. He's rushed for over 100 yards in each of his last two games. Today, Brown will try to extend his streak against the Pirates of East Carolina. Stay tuned as the sixth-rated West Virginia Mountaineers meet the Pirates of ECU along the Mountaineer Sports Network. Today's game is brought to you by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Key Centurion Bank Shares, building our communities together. Walker Machinery, your Caterpillar dealer. Your Mountaineer Chrysler Plymouth dealers. The competition knows it's the team to beat. U.S. Air, with flights to over 100 cities in North America. At U.S. Air, we welcome all of our passengers, one at a time. Greetings, everyone, from Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. This afternoon, the sixth-rated West Virginia Mountaineers take on the Pirates of East Carolina. I'm Tony Caridi, along with John Garcia, and we're glad you're with us along the Mountaineer Sports Network. Well, I guess you could call the East Carolina Pirates of 1988 a Jekyll and Hyde team. Offensively, they have proven they can score, averaging up to 30 points a game, but... John, on defense, they've given up 93 points in the last two games, and because of that, they've made nine defensive personnel changes from a week ago. Now, how can that affect the team? Those type switches can be good, and they can be bad. If they're good, they'll come out and play a lot of enthusiastic football. If they're bad, they'll have a bunch of inexper inexperienced players running around in circles. Well, West Virginia had some problems a week ago, six turnovers and 13 penalties against Virginia Tech, yet they were able to come away with a victory, rolling up over 500 yards of total offense. This afternoon, Don Nealon says the mistakes have to be taken care of, and if they are, the Mountaineers should leave Greenville with a 6-0 record. Stay tuned. The opening kickoff coming up, West Virginia against East Carolina along the Mountaineers Sports Network. And we welcome you back to Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. The West Virginia Mountaineers have taken the field along with the Pirates of East Carolina. Homecoming 1988 here at Ficklin Stadium. Crowd estimates uh, supposedly in 30,000 in the 30,000 range with the attendance uh, capacity being about 35,000 but plenty of empty seats as the captains meet out at midfield for the ceremonial coin toss. For West Virginia, Robert Pickett, Bo Orlando, Kevin Koken, and John Stroya. Take a look at the series history, the first meeting between the Mountaineers and the Pirates, 1970. West Virginia has never lost to East Carolina University. A year ago, the Mountaineer offense woke up in Morgantown, scoring 49 points in a 49 to nothing win. And since that game, where the Mountaineers put 49 on the board, they're averaging 38 points in their last 13 games. The last time the Mountaineers played here at Ficklin Stadium, though, it was an entirely different story as Mike Timko had to hit Harvey Smith with a touchdown pass with just six seconds remaining to come away with a 24-21 victory over the Pirates of East Carolina. West Virginia University has won the toss, and they have deferred until the second half of play. Well, the Mountaineers come into this game after a mistake game a week ago. I guess you could call it a problem-filled game. John Garcia, they committed six turnovers, four fumbles and two interceptions, and 13 penalties, but were still able to come away with their fifth straight victory over the Virginia Tech Hokies. The Mountaineers, sixth in the United Press International Coaches Poll, seventh according to the Associated Press Poll, and the Mountaineers' highest ranking ever back in 1983 when they were fourth with that 6-0 record, and that's what they'll try to achieve here this afternoon. Six consecutive victories. Obviously, Coach uh, Nealon is concerned about the wind here. We have a strong wind from our left to our right, Tony, and that was probably the reason why he deferred the kickoff. West Virginia University's all-time winningest coach, Don Nealon. 63 victories in Morgantown, over 50 victories, while the head coach at Bowling Green, 110 total victories in his career. Brad Carroll will handle the kickoff chores for West Virginia for the third straight week. If you'll remember, Charlie Bauman, the Mountaineer field goal kicker, had been handling the kickoffs for the first several games, but they feel that Carroll's got the stronger leg, and he did a good job a week ago at Virginia Tech, placing the ball several times into the end zone for touchbacks. Junior Robinson, number 21, is the deep threat for East Carolina. He's back there along with Reggie McKinney, and we're all set to get underway. The West Virginia Mountaineers and the Pirates of East Carolina University.
Carroll's kick will be taken one yard in by Junior Robinson. Robinson crosses over the 20-yard line, and he breaks free. Across midfield, Robinson hemmed in, and he'll be knocked out of bounds at the 44-yard line inside West Virginia University territory. A 64-yard return to start the game off by Junior Robinson. There's no doubt, Tony, that this East Carolina team is going to have a lot of talent down here, just shown by Junior Robinson's speed breaking loose on the kickoff return. So excellent field position for Coach Art Baker's club. First down and 10. They spot the ball on the 35-yard line. Charlie Labretta is the quarterback. And the option toss on the first play of the game. Over there to... East Carolina's Reggie McKinney as Ronaldo Turnbull comes over to make the stop. Junior out of St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. Ronaldo second on the team in tackles with 40. We're going to see a lot of different multiple formations by the East Carolina offense. The majority of the time with one back in the backfield. Four-yard pickup by McKinney. Libretto looks to throw a broken play. Man is open, and that is Reggie McKinney inside the 15-yard line. A 20-yard pickup. Libretto looks as though the play was broken. Bo Orlando finally came over to make the stop on Reggie McKinney, a senior out of Mount Olive, North Carolina. The West Virginia coaching staff is really impressed with Libretto and his ability to be able to scramble and find the open receiver. Charlie Libretto did a great job that time. First down and 10 from the Mountaineer 12-yard line. Beautiful stop there by West Virginia's Ronaldo Turnbull as Libretto was looking for the option. Dumped back at the 15-yard line. It'll be a three-yard loss, and Turnbull picks up his second tackle of the ball game. Tony, we'll see two different type options today, the freeze option and the trap option. That particular one was a free op freeze option. Ronaldo did a great job. East Carolina Pirates using a double slot formation. So you've only got a single man in the backfield, and that's McKinney in motion. Second down and 13. Jared Moody, the receiver, and they'll call it a good catch. Inside the 15-yard line, down to the 14. Bo Orlando, West Virginia's strong safety, coming over to make the stop. When the offense spreads you, spreads you out with this type of formation, it really limits what you can do defensively. It's very hard to play man coverage with four people wideouts like that. Again, they show the four wideouts. Tim James, the fullback, the lone man in the backfield. Third down and 11, Libretto overthrows the intended receiver. That was Reggie McKinney. Bo Orlando is back on the coverage for West Virginia. 12 minutes and 29 seconds to go, first quarter of play. That brings up a fourth down and long, and Rob Imperato will come on to try the field goal. A sophomore from Boca Raton. Five of nine this season. He's made his last three in a row. Against South Carolina, he missed three in a row. A 30-yard attempt by Imperato. It's high enough, and it is no good. The win took it blowing it to the left and the Mountaineers stop the East Carolina Pirates after a 64-yard kickoff return by Junior Robinson. So the Pirates threaten but West Virginia holds and the Mountaineers will start off first and 10 from the 20-yard line with 12.25 to go here in the first quarter of play. Major Harris at the controls for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Major coming off his best passing performance as a Mountaineer a week ago, throwing for 205 yards against the Virginia Tech Hokies. Adrian Moss begins the game for West Virginia at the tight end position. Craig Taylor, the ball carrier, a five-yard pickup for the senior out of Linden, New Jersey. So Moss starts at tight end for the Mountaineers. That's because Keith Wynn has been bothered all week long by a bruised muscle in the shoulder. It's going to be very difficult for East Carolina to sit in there and punch with us with 50 to 60 plays today. So we anticipate a lot of stunning, and that's one of the reasons why they have so many different players in there for East Carolina. 
Three minutes gone by. A.B. Brown dumped behind the line of scrimmage for a one-yard loss. A.B. is looking to become the first West Virginia Mountaineer to rush for over, to rush for 300 yards in consecutive weeks. No Mountaineer has rushed for over 100 yards three straight weeks since Robert Alexander did it way back in October of 1980. Brown had 110 yards against Pitt, 191 yards a week ago against Virginia Tech, and looking for the century mark again here today. Brown, the intended receiver, can't make the catch. And that'll bring up fourth down for West Virginia, and Lance Carrion will have to come on the field. So the Pirate defense, which has undergone a major facelifting from a week ago with nine new players in there, holds off West Virginia. Carry on punt, a nice one, a high spiraler. And that ball was touched and then knocked out of bounds. And fortunately, East Carolina will maintain possession. Lance having a very good year. They're, they're this year with 44-yard average. This copyrighted broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by West Virginia University through its Mountaineer Sports Network solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express written permission of the Mountaineer Sports Network is prohibited. The announcers on this broadcast are employed by the Mountaineer Sports Network. References to products made are paid commercial messages. So East Carolina starting off first down and 10 from their 22-yard line. And the play is blown dead as flags fly, motion along the line of scrimmage. Flags. 11 minutes and six seconds to go here in the first period. As we take a look at Charlie Libretto, wearing number 10 for the East Carolina Pirates. And you can see Libretto and Travis Hunter, who share quarterbacking chores for East Carolina, have been doing a good job, averaging 426 yards of total offense per game. But that defense is letting the offense down, giving up 418 yards. Motion penalty against East Carolina drives them back five yards, so it is first and 15 from the 15-yard line. Libretto on the option toss, going to McKinney. Knocked off. After a five-yard pickup by Daryl Whitmore. Reggie McKinney, a senior from Mount Olive, North Carolina, a week ago, rushed for his 1,000th yard as an East Carolina Pirate in four seasons. He's averaging 5.6 yards per carry. Comes into the ball game this afternoon with 232 yards on 39 carries. One yard loss on the play, and so it is second down and 11. Libetto, third attempt of the afternoon. Whitmore's after it, and that is an interception for Daryl Whitmore. The red-shirted freshman from Front Royal, Virginia, scooped that ball up just before it hit the turf. A week ago, he had an interception against Virginia Tech, and then an apparent second interception that was ruled no good. Whitmore claims that he cleanly had the second interception a week ago, but this one was clean as it could be as Whitmore comes up to make the scoop interception, giving West Virginia excellent field position. First and 10 from the 37-yard line. That's Kelvin Phillips in motion. Greg Taylor, the ball carrier. Go. Michael Applewhite, left defensive tackle, coming over to make the stop on Craig Taylor. Craig Taylor on the carry for the Mountaineers, tackled by the Pirates. Taylor's gained over 200 yards on the ground this season for the Mountaineers, 214 coming into this one on 39 carries. They give him four, so it's second down and... Well, call it second down and seven. Three-yard pickup. Major Harris. And that ball is loose. West Virginia has recovered. So both teams having problems holding on to it early. West Virginia very fortunate on that one, Tony. The ball bouncing right in front of uh, A.B. Brown. The play is recovered by West Virginia's Calvin Phillips. Brown really never had control in Kelvin Phillips there. The ball on top of it. 
This is what Coach Neal talked about all week, is get back to our concentration and come out and execute and play good football. Mountaineers line up under a Johnson as a receiver to the right. This is something new. On third down and five. Harris with plenty of time. Ball is deflected. Game Singletary. The left defensive end got his hand on Major Harris's pass. Harris was looking for Andre Johnson, who lined up as a receiver. Johnson normally a tailback for the Mountaineers, and that'll bring up fourth down. And Charlie Bauman will come on. Bauman will be shotting a 49-yard attempt. Into the wind, Bauman's kick is good. Charlie Bauman with his longest field goal of the season, a 49-yard boot as West Virginia takes the lead 3 to nothing. Well, the Mountaineers off of a 49-yard field goal by Charlie Bauman take the early lead. John Garcia, both teams offensively have had some problems holding on to the football. Fortunately, the Mountaineers have a guy like Bauman they can go to who converts from 49 yards away. That's a career long for Charlie Bauman. His longest coming into the game was 47, but he hit that one from 49 away. As far as holding on to the ball, the weather is definitely not a factor. On the field, anyway, the sun's out. It's probably 60 degrees. Up here in the booth, it's a little bit colder. Yeah, it is. Now I know why. what you mean by an open-air booth. <laughs> Junior, Robinson. Junior Robinson is back deep to return as Brad Carroll. No doubt will be trying to kick away from Robinson. Junior Robinson with a 64-yard return to start the ball game off, but the Pirates were unable to convert. And notice this time, Tony, West Virginia kicking it from the left hash. So they'll try to stay away from Robinson. And they do. Reggie McKinney will have no return. That'll be a touchback. East Carolina will start off. First down and 10 from their 20-yard line. Reggie McKinney. Well, the West Virginia Mountaineers won't soon forget their last game here at Ficklin Stadium back in 1986, a game they struggled throughout, but were able to win as Mike Timko Threw a pass into the end zone to Harvey Smith that was caught for a touchdown with just six seconds remaining, and West Virginia escaped, literally, with a 24-21 victory over the Pirates. A year ago, the Mountaineers manhandled ECU 49 to nothing. Libretto on the option. It goes to McKinney, and he bobbles it out of bounds. He'll lose a yard on the play, bringing up second down and 11. Willie Edwards, the right quarterback for the Mountaineers out of Morgantown, Played the play beautifully as McKinney was looking up. The ball batted off of his hands. That play was, was executed very good by the West Virginia defense. Again, when you play against an option team, it's assignment defense. There has to be somebody on the dive. There has to be somebody on the pitch. And there has to be somebody on the quarterback. West Virginia playing it to perfection that time. Pirates again showing the double slot formation. And again, Libretto looking to run the option. Libretto breaking free as Bo Orlando drags him down at the 40-yard line. A 21-yard pickup by Charlie Libretto, who really isn't known as a running quarterback. Comes into the ball game with 132 yards rushing on 31 carries. Theron Ellis, the inside linebacker, has to keep that ball on his inside shoulder. He got outside. Charlie cut it back to the inside. East Carolina's been struggling on first down so far. They've gained just one yard on first down plays. This is first and 10 from the 41. The fullback is Tim James, held up by Orlando and finally brought down. Lonnie Brockman making the stop as Orlando made the initial hit. James is one of a long line of strong and powerful East Carolina fullbacks. He played in the shadow of Anthony Simpson, who was drafted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And in his senior year, it's time for Tim James to play, although he has been slowed by a bruised foot. They say that he's at 100%. Suffered the foot injury against Southern Mississippi. Seven-yard pickup, and so it is second down and three. And again, they go to James, but this time the running room is tough as Chris Herring meets James at midfield and sets him down. In fact, Tony, the last three fullbacks that have played for East, uh, East Carolina are presently in the NFL. Simpson was a strong one. He's gone. 
Looking back to that 1986 game, Simpson gave the Mountaineers all kinds of problems. He's currently playing with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Third down and two for East Carolina. They go to James, and he's got the first down yardage. Crosses into West Virginia territory at the 49. Lonnie Brockman, the junior out of Pittsburgh, rolled him up. But not before James got across the first down marker. The pro scouts feel that James has more potential than any of the three former fullbacks here at East Carolina. Definite pro possibility. You're right, John. Seven minutes and 25 seconds to go in the first quarter as Gerard Moody comes in motion. So three receivers over to the left side, and that's where Libretto looks. The pressure is on. The ball is loose. West Virginia has it. Michael Fox came over. He's got the fumble. The West Virginia offense is on as Mike Fox comes up. Wait a second. They're not going to call it a fumble. They say he was in the act of throwing the football, so they're going to call it an incomplete forward pass. Well, that might be worth a couple of looks. Brings it back to the 44-yard line. Second down and 19. Libretto looking over for Denell Harper and Bo Orlando on the coverage. That's a prime example of the run-and-shoot offense. And East Carolina's offensive coordinator is formerly from the, from the Canadian Football League, so he has a lot of experience in that wide-open football that East Carolina will play today. Charlie Libretto will be looking at third down and 19. That's Reggie McKinney in motion. Pressure is on. Deron Ellis makes the stop. A beautiful hit on Tim James, the fullback. Ellis met him right at the 40-yard line, and the Pirates will be forced to punt. You mentioned Theron Ellis earlier, John, that he didn't play the option just right as Libretto had a nice run from scrimmage. But there, he played the screen pass perfectly as he met James chest to chest. John Jett is the punter for the East Carolina Pirates coming into the game, averaging 39 and a half yards per kick. Grannis Bell from the 20-yard line, breaking free. This is Grannis Bell. Knocked out of bounds at the 33-yard line. A beautiful piece of work with not much territory to do it in for West Virginia senior Grannis Bell, a 38-yard punt by John Jett. 5.56 to go. West Virginia leads it 3 to nothing. Attention sports fans, NBA excitement is back. WCHS-TV and Bush Beer present NBA basketball. The Seattle Supersonics and the Indiana Pacers will play an exhibition game at the Charleston Civic Center, Sunday, October 16th, 7 p.m. See NBA All-Star Xavier McDaniel. Also, former West Virginia Tech star Sadale Freed returning to Charleston with the Sonics. A portion of all ticket sales will be donated to West Virginia Lions Site Foundation. NBA action. It's fantastic. Monday on A Current Affair. She's a red-headed firebrand. She's young, daring, full of life. She's also the Royal Duchess of York. But Sarah Ferguson is not a typical duchess. Buckingham Palace breathlessly awaited the recent birth of her daughter, hoping against hope that motherhood might slow her down. No chance. Formidable Fergie, the people's princess. It's Monday night at 7 on A Current Affair. Tonight. For three years, okay. Bill Oakley took orders. But tonight, he's got to stand up and take charge. You make America work. Here's to you, the clean, crisp taste of Beechwood-aged Budweiser. For all the guys who know it's not what you say, but what you do.
West Virginia University. Starting off first and 10 from the 33 yard line. Mountaineers lead it three to nothing. Andre Johnson into the ball game for West Virginia, breaking free, and he'll have the first down. Andre Johnson, finally brought down there by Brian Haywood. Andre, and a reserve role, has scored five touchdowns this season. Number 79, Brian Smiter, coming up the middle on an inside fold block, just about wiped out the whole interior line of East Carolina. From the 44-yard line, it's Craig Taylor. Brought down by freshman linebacker Robert Jones. A couple of changes in the West Virginia lineup. To begin with, you've got Andre Johnson in there. In place of A.B. Brown. Brown did start the ball game, but fumbled the football away. And you've also got Adrian Moss in at tight end for the Mountaineers in place of Keith Wynn, who's been bothered by a bruised shoulder. Two-yard pickup. Three-yard pickup, second down and seven. And again, Johnson gets the call, looking to turn the corner. Andre Johnson has another West Virginia first down. Do you think Don Neal a little disappointed in A.B.'s ability to hold on to the ball here early, Tony? Well, apparently, that's it. Because Brown is not, is not receiving treatment down on the sideline for any injury that we can tell. And so... Well, that, Perhaps the coach is sending a message. That's one thing that makes West Virginia a great football team. Here you are, a starter, and the second team come, guy comes in and does a good job. Andre Johnson again gets the call and a big hole for Andre. A block from Jamie Lamont. And Johnson down to the East Carolina 19-yard line. Or should I say a great job? Without question, one of the best reserve tailbacks in all of college football, Andre Johnson. Senior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. His career has been that of a reserve, and he's moved himself to become West Virginia's 10th all-time ground gainer as a reserve. Andre ex extremely quick on his ability to be able to cut back. Johnson again gets the call as a penalty flag flies. Johnson down to the 16-yard line. Robert Jones there to meet him. Looks like we can get a holding call from West Virginia. Captain. So the Mountaineers will be pushed back. Like we were talking last night in the hotel room, Tony, that uh, these three tailbacks are probably better than any of the tailbacks that I was associated with at West Virginia. Mountaineers have run themselves into a streak of strong tailbacks with A.B. Brown, Andre Johnson, Eugene Napoleon. Don Nealon says his club cannot afford to make the penalties that they did a week ago against Virginia Tech and still win football games. Was the first against the Mountaineers, a holding penalty, bringing them back to the 30-yard line. Andre Johnson knocked back at the line of scrimmage. Mike Applewhite was there to make the hit. Mike Applewhite, a junior, 6'3", 255. We're going to see a lot of this guy. He's defensive player of the week against South Carolina. The crowd reacting as Major Harris handed the ball off. He was hammered. And Mountaineer fans here booing the call. They were looking for a late hit on quarterback Major Harris. East Carolina plays a, a variation of the wide tackle six with those two defensive tackles. Second down and 22 facing the Mountaineers. And Harris looking deep. Going for Jamie Lamont, wide open. Down to the nine-yard line. Ricky Terrain, the right cornerback, was there, but Lamont was wide open. Our big guys up front doing a great job protecting Major Harris. Jamie coming up with a big play. That's his eighth reception for the year. Jamie had a big week at Virginia Tech last Saturday as he caught four passes from Major Harris. He was named Phil Hustler for his efforts against Virginia Tech. Andre Johnson has the first down for West Virginia as he brings it up to the five-yard line. Robert Jones again making the stop on Andre Johnson. He had a very productive game against the Pirates a season ago in Morgantown when he had 99 yards, and he's already got 53 here this afternoon with just under three minutes to go in the first quarter of play. 
First down for the Mountaineers, so it's first and goal from the five-yard line. A week ago, West Virginia had a first and goal situation on two occasions and had to settle for field goals. Johnson again, the ball carrier, with the whole touchdown. Touchdown number six of the season for Andre Johnson. The Mountaineers lead it nine to nothing with two minutes and 38 seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. West Virginia really needed to punch that in there to be able to build that confidence back from the uh, inability to get into the end zone last week. Charlie Bauman, 25 of 26 with extra points this season. That one is good, and West Virginia takes a 10 to nothing lead with 2.38 to go here in the first quarter of play. West Virginia University. One of the things that makes Under a great tailback is his ability and his vision to see those seams. He does a good job and he has a nose for the football. Seems like this guy's been around forever. Got to give some credit there to that offensive line for the Mountaineers. Rick Phillips, John Stroya, and Craig Taylor coming up from his fullback position, making key blocks on that play, and Undra walked it right in for West Virginia's first touchdown. If you remember about four years ago, Undra had a 206-yard effort against Temple his freshman year. The Mountaineers arching 68 yards in seven plays, using up three minutes and 18 seconds as Johnson scores it from five yards away. So despite the holding penalty, which brought up a second down and 22, West Virginia was able to score. You can see the West Virginia offense very productive and the Mountaineer defense very stingy. Mountaineers with that 43 point per game average are fourth nationally in scoring. As we take a look at Junior Robinson who began the game with a bang, a 64 yard return. Believe it or not, John, that was not Robinson's longest kick return of the season. He ran one back for a touchdown from 98 yards away to start the season against Tennessee Tech. They kick it away from Robinson and this is Reggie McKinney at the 20 yard line up to the 23 yard line. McKinney still up. Finally brought down to the 30. Talk about extra effort. A tremendous return there by Reggie McKinney. He's averaging 24 yards a return this season. And a tremendous effort by the senior. He was a question mark in 1987 season with a severe back injury and has come along real well. So the East Carolina Pirates will start it off from their 30-yard line, trailing it 10 to nothing. Quarterback Charlie Libretto still in there. And he's going to have to call a timeout. First timeout taken in the ball game. Timeout. Libretto has had a, what you could call, rocky career at East Carolina. Two years ago when the Mountaineers Ladies played here, Libretto, a true freshman, made his first start. Since that time, Libretto has quit this football team on two different occasions and really didn't come back to the team until late August of this season uh, before the coaches said, yes, if you do want to come back, you can come back. And so he started off the season as a reserve a week ago he made the start against Southwest Louisiana and played very well, completing 11 of 20 passes for 163 yards. Scored three touchdowns by himself on the run in the first half of that game. Threw another touchdown pass later in the game, but the end result was loss number four of the season for East Carolina as they bowed to Southwest Louisiana, 48 to 36. Mountaineer defense has given up just 52 yards in total offense so far on 12 plays from the Pirates. Tim James, the fullback with room. Met by Chris Herring and Daryl Whitmore and a penalty flag flies. Fullback Tim James carries the football into the line for the Pirates. Herring there, Five making the stop on James. Northwest Virginia. There are flags down on the line. And it will go against East Carolina. A holding penalty will drive him back. Chris had a super game against Virginia Tech last week. A couple beautiful stops on the draw. 
and he was named defensive champion for his effort. The penalty is against East Carolina. Tony, how those? Take a look at the hold on this play. It is still right there. You see it. Turnbull was trying to come over, and he had his arms taken from behind. So a 10-yard penalty will bring up first down and 20 from the Pirate 19-yard line. Libretto on the quarterback draw. Orlando has him. Back at the 21-yard line. Mo Orlando, the senior from Berwick, Pennsylvania, read it beautifully, and another penalty marker is down. That was great assignment football by West Virginia. Chris Herring sitting right there, making Liberetto go to the outside. Bo Orlando coming up, making a good play, keeping that ball to the inside. And Bo got the hand up near Libretto's mask, and they've got the penalty down, and that's a face mask against West Virginia. An unintentional face mask, so a five-yard penalty. A face mask, five yards on the defense, still first down. The penalty is against West Virginia for a face mask. So penalties on. It is now first down. Successive plays. First down and 15. The man was wide open there, Al Whiting, but he slipped down as Willie Edwards was back on the coverage. Whiting was open, he slipped as he was making his turn towards the ball. East Carolina with this wide open offensive tack, Coach Kralavich told me last night, that uh, in all the films that they watched, five games, he only ran 20 traditional plays, the isolation in the sweep. The rest has been some type of wide open attack. Second down and 15, a passing situation for Libretto. He's two of six so far in the game. Has time. Deron Ellis almost had himself an interception. Ball was intended there for Walter Wilson. And Theron Ellis is gonna remember that one for a while. Junior out of Norristown, Pennsylvania. That'll bring up third down and 15. Pirates are one of three on third down conversions. One minute and 54 seconds to go. First quarter of play, West Virginia leads it 10 to nothing. Pressure is on, Libretto is down. Robert Pickett with the sack. Back at the 15 yard line. Robert Pickett, the senior from Miami, Florida, makes the hit. And John Jett will be brought on to punt. A big play by Robert, Robert Pickett. That time, West Virginia brought both inside linebackers on a stunt. Brannis Bell is back deep to return for the Mountaineers. A poor kick by Jett. Bell will let it die. And the Mountaineers will start off at their own 42-yard line, first and 10, with one minute and 16 seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. From there, the fans, don't forget that Mountaineer Sports Night is coming your way next Friday evening on MSN Television. Host Woody O'Hara will look at today's highlights along with talking with head coach Don Nealon. We'll also be reviewing West Virginia's first six games. Consult your local listings for the time in your area. Quarterback Major Harris has not put the ball up, but once so far in the ball game. Here comes pass attempt number two. Wide open, it's Adrian Moss, the Mountaineer tight end, down to the 41-yard line. First down for West Virginia. Robert Jones, number 44, made the stop on Adrian Moss. This is the biggest day for Adrian Moss in his Mountaineer career as he draws the start. He had been sharing time along with Keith Wynn and Daryl Mitchell, but he started off this ball game and has played the entire quarter. He also played in all 12 games last year. Under a minute to go, first quarter. Harris on the option with a seam. Knocked down by Robert Jones, also coming in to make the stop, James Singletary. As we get a look at West Virginia sophomore quarterback, Major Harris. Major rushed for 55 yards a week ago. 
against Virginia Tech, but if you'd ask him, he'd say it was one of his poor performances in the Mountaineer uniform. He was responsible for five of West Virginia's six turnovers. Andre Johnson on second down and six. Running room is tough. As Mike Applewhite was there to make the hit. Final seconds ticking off the first quarter clock. West Virginia will take a 10 to nothing lead at the end of the first quarter of play. Andre Johnson with a five yard touchdown run gives the Mountaineers the TD. We'll be back after this. The Mountaineers take a 10 to nothing lead as we're set to begin second quarter of play. West Virginia will have the ball at the East Carolina 36 yard line. Andre Johnson, the leading ground gainer in that first quarter for West Virginia. The senior out of Fort Lauderdale with 53 yards on six carries. Harris has Granis Bell. Granis down to the 25, first down West Virginia. Donald Porch brought down Granis Bell as Granis has his first catch of the ball game. Senior from Fort Lauderdale comes into the ball game with just three catches. Wide open there as Porch got caught behind. Andre Johnson in at tailback. Craig Taylor the fullback. This is Johnson. He's got room. Johnson down to the 19-yard line. Robert Jones makes the stop on Andre Johnson. If you look on the back of the West Virginia helmets, Tony, you see muskets. And for every big play, whether it's a big run or a fumble recovery, they're given those muskets for their achievements. Mountaineers marching after their second touchdown of the ball game. Bauman hit a 49-yard field goal, and Andre Johnson ran one in from five yards away. Give West Virginia a 10 to nothing lead. Craig Taylor closed it quickly down to the 17. We were talking about A.B. Brown as to why he wasn't playing, and there's the reason. An ice pack taped up on the back of that right leg. A.B. has been plagued by hamstring problems. Really took him out of last year's games for the most part. He was still able to rush for over 900 yards. Adrian Moss has the ball and the touchdown for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Moss came into the game and didn't have a single reception. He has two here already in the ball game, and his second one goes for an 18-yard TD as West Virginia takes a 16-0 lead with 13.26 to go here in the first half of play. I think Adrian was surprised he didn't get hit on that one. He kind of eased up a little bit as he coasted into the end zone. He was looking around for contact but couldn't <laughs> find any, so he settled himself into the end zone. He said it, could, it can't be this easy. Charlie Bauman's extra point attempt is good. And West Virginia leads it 17 to nothing with 13.26 to go here in the second quarter of play. Quarterback Major Harris takes a breather as he fires a touchdown pass to Adrian Moss, giving West Virginia a 17 to nothing lead. Major really put the zip on that ball. I mean, he cocked that thing way back. Again, plenty of time for Major to look for his receiver. And Adrian are coming across on a drag pattern. This guy's 250 pounds, and he's going to be hard to bring down. That was Harris's fourth touchdown pass of the season, and Adrian Moss's second catch of the year, as mentioned earlier, and first touchdown pass as a West Virginia Mountaineer. He's a junior out of Cocoa Beach, Florida. And John mentioned he's got some great physical attributes, six feet, five inches tall, and 250 pounds. Well, they're going to put Charlie Bauman out as the West Virginia offense gets together on the sideline with... Exterior line coach Dave McMichael. Charlie Bauman will come on to handle the kickoff. Brad Carroll kicked the first three off. He's probably going to keep it low, Tony, because of the wind. And that way Carroll can put that ball up into the wind and get it down into the end zone. Let's see what happens. The 
This one will be taken by Junior Robinson. Robinson knocked down by Willie Edwards over the 27-yard line. The man that they didn't want to return it, Junior Robinson. Up to the 27. Robinson with the 64-yard return to start this ball game off. They think he's one of the finest athletes ever to play at East Carolina. He's also a member of the East Carolina University 4 by 100 meter relay team. So that tells you something about his speed. And a year ago, they qualified for the NCAA National Championships. 4-4 four, four speed in the 40. Pirates begin this drive from their 27-yard line. Libretto on the option will keep. Over for West Virginia to make the stop. Steve Grant, a freshman linebacker out of Miami, Florida. As far as a run to pass ratio, Tony, the East Carolina Pirates are about 70-30. 70% run, 30% pass. A lot of motion from the East Carolina offense as they go into the double slot formation. The fullback, Tim James. Close to the first down marker. Needs the 37-yard line for the first down. Really, all that motion is is a tailback lined up in a wing, and he comes around just like a tailback would on the option. So it's just a way to confuse the defense. Libretto has been intercepted once this afternoon. On the season, East, Par East Carolina quarterbacks have thrown 10, make it 11 interceptions, 10 coming into this game. So the interception has been the problem for East Carolina when it comes to the turnover. They really haven't fumbled it that much and lost the ball on fumbles just twice. James's run is good for the first down. They've also been very lucky. They've fumbled 15 times and recovered all but two. Yeah, that's right. Pirates from the 37-yard line. Long count here by Libretto. West Virginia reading the option well. A two-yard pickup by Charlie Libretto. Dale Jackson coming over to make the stop. Jackson working himself back into the Mountaineer lineup after a knee injury. This is what you and I argued about last night, Tony. They had three guys moving at the same time. Then they're set for that second, and then they put the man in motion. I wouldn't call it an argument last night. <laughs> Nothing was thrown that I can remember. How about a debate? <laughs> second down and eight. The quick pass intended for Reggie McKinney and Preston Waters on the coverage for West Virginia. Libretto is struggling, two of eight passing so far. A week ago, threw the ball very well, 11 of 20 is what he finished up with, 163 yards through the air, but so far this afternoon, two of eight. He ranks seventh in East Carolina University history as far as passing yards, 1,649 yards. ECU is one of four in third down conversions. This is third down and eight. Ball's batted away by Dale Jackson, and the Pirates will be forced to punt. A beautiful play there by Dale Jackson, the senior out of Canton, Ohio. Gill coming on with a big pass rush, getting those hands up in the air to limit the quarterback's vision. A great job by Dale. Jackson, as we mentioned, battling back from a knee injury, a knee sprain that kept him out of a couple games. Bad snap. Jet gets the kickoff, and a nice one with the wind behind him. No return, and the Mountaineers will start off first and ten from the nine-yard line. So Jet... Just a freshman does a good job in taking that ball off the turf on a poor snap, and the Mountaineers will start off from their nine. West Virginia leads it 17 to nothing. 11.08 to go. 
here in the first half of play. For all you Mountaineer fans watching in on WCHS TV 8 in Charleston, this Bud's for you. So the Mountaineers will start off with what will be their poorest field position of the ball game. Andre Johnson staying in at tailback. A.B. Brown on the sideline with an ice pack on the right leg. Johnson up the middle. Met there by Shane Hubble and James Singletary. A.B.'s legs are so darn big and muscular, he seems to always have trouble with those things when the weather gets a little bit cold. Tackled by the Pirates, James Singletary and Robert Jones. Easy One of the nicest kids on the West Virginia University team, Andre Johnson. I wonder if there's any, been any scientific research done on hamstrings, Tony. I have, I've heard that there has been. <laughs> we'll get into that a little bit later. On second down and five, Johnson breaks free for the first down. Ahead to the 28-yard line, met there by Anthony Thompson. Andre, Andre Johnson, again, gives himself a pat on the fist there. Thought he could get a little bit more on a big hole opening up there by that offensive line for the Mountaineers. Kevin Koken, Bob Kovac. Under quite an athlete, a 34 and a half inch vertical jump and a 4440. Johnson working on a 100 yard outing here. 75 yards on nine carries. On first and 10, Harris looks to put it into the air and he's got his tight end again. It's Adrian Moss and Moss has his third catch of the ball game. Bringing it ahead to the 37-yard line. Knocked out of bounds there by Robert Jones. And you take a look at Moss and just see how big that he is. 6'5", 250 pounds, and he's having himself his career in one afternoon here with three catches. He came into the ball game with no, no catches through the first five games of the season. He's almost like a tackle with the ability to run and catch. Ten-minute mark of the second quarter of play. Andre Johnson. Got himself caught up there with Bob Kovac, the right guard for the Mountaineers, as Robert Jones came over to make the hit on Andre Johnson. Tackled by Robert Jones of the Pirates. It is second down. Mountaineers averaging 43 points per game. East Carolina comes in, their offense, averaging 29 points per game. So two good offensive clubs. The question coming into this one, was which defense would hold. And so far, it's the Mountaineer defense that's been doing the job. Major Harris drops the football, and East Carolina has it. The fumble comes back to haunt the Mountaineers' Major Harris. A week ago, he was hit and coughed up five turnovers. And this time he was holding and holding and holding and got hit back there and stripped on the play by James Singletary, number 58, popped it free. And Mike Applewhite, number 88, was there to pick it up. Give credit to Singletary. He just stuck his hand in there and popped it out. Pirates have it first and 10 at the West Virginia 36-yard line. Looking for their first points of the game. A quarterback switch. Travis Hunter working the ball over to Darren Bynum, our reserve flanker. Jim Gray came over to make the stop along with Bo Orlando. East Carolina throwing a little wrinkle in there. They called the play on the sidelines, ran out to the field and immediately lined up and showed the reverse. So we've got a quarterback switch as Libretto, who was struggling, passing two of eight, comes in and goes out. And Travis Hunter's into the ball game. Five feet, 11 inches tall, 185 pounds. Lost the starting job after starting the first four games for the Pirates. Reggie McKinney, the ball carrier. Met there by Steve Grant. And that's one thing about using a two-quarterback system. There seemed to be a little bit of spark when that kid came in there. Hunter was the starting quarterback a season ago when the Pirates came to Morgantown to play West Virginia. Third down and five. That's Moody in motion. Hunter will look to throw. Herring is after Travis Hunter, and he's got the first down. 
Knocked down at the 21 yard line, and now we've got a flag coming down late. A late hit call will go against the Mountaineers. Steve Grant was over. A broken play as Hunter had the thought of passing initially. And this is his strength, running with the football. It's just a foot race there between Chris Herring and no number five, Travis Grant. Number four, Steve Grant, a little bit overzealous there. Cost us 15 yards. So the Pirates have the ball at the 10-yard line on the 15-yard penalty. Seven minutes and 55 seconds to go, first half. West Virginia leads it 17 to nothing. The fullback James, the ball is loose. And the Pirates recover it. Good job by the interior defensive line, Chris Parker. Mike Fox there, along with Chris Harry as Hunter came up with the ball after making the handoff to Tim James. West Virginia substituting the big guys, Summits, Fox, and Theron Ellis. From the West Virginia 12-yard line. The option toss going to McKinney. Hit out of bounds there by Chris Herring and Daryl Whitmore. Bringing it down to the six yard line. This is third down. The Pirates can get a first down without scoring. The first down marker, if you take a look there at the pylon to your top of the screen, is right on the goal line, so they could conceivably get a first and goal situation. This is third down and six. Hunter, first pass is deflected. Chris Harry, who's been all over the field for the Mountaineers this afternoon, deflected Hunter's pass into the end zone. And that will bring up fourth down, and Rob Imperato will come on as Hunter goes to the bench. Now Hunter's only 5'11". It's awful difficult for him to see over the big guys with their hands up, and that was one benefit that time. Imperato missed earlier in the ball game from 30 yards away. This will be a 22-yard attempt. He's got the wind behind him. Imperato's kick is good. And with seven minutes to go here in the first half of play, the Pirates hit the board. West Virginia 17, East Carolina 3. Well, John, a West Virginia fumble gives East Carolina field position inside Mountaineer territory, and they're able to manage a field goal from 22 yards away as they score their first point, 17 to 3. Mountaineers have the lead with seven minutes to go here in the first half. As we said last week, Tony, any time there's a fumble inside your own field position, that's considered a sudden change. A field goal is considered a stop, so West Virginia defense did a good job that time. Imperato, who just kicked the 22-yard field goal, will handle the kickoff for ECU. Ball will roll out of bounds, and they'll have to move it back five yards. He's got to be a little bit cold out there with no sock on. I'm telling you. I'm cold up here with two socks on. <laughs> <laughs> Mountaineers will have an off week next week. And then they'll open up a two-game homestand, taking on Boston College and the Penn State Nittany Lions to close out the month of October. Mountaineer fans should take note that the Boston College game is now an official sellout. The Penn State game had sold out earlier. So the only tickets remaining for Mountaineer fans this season for home games will be the Syracuse game, which will be the 11th game of the season. Mountaineer offense comes into this ball game. Averaging 487 yards, and you can see that they are already over the 100 mark with seven minutes to go here in the second quarter of play. Imperato's kick will be taken by Eugene Napoleon. He muffs it. Napoleon from the five-yard line. 
He'll bring it up to the seven. And a penalty marker comes down on the play. So Napoleon made the mistake. Now let's see which team made the mistake. The preliminary signal will be a penalty against West Virginia. East Carolina lining up in a kind of funny kickoff coverage. This is the first time I've ever seen that. In my years associated with football, everybody seemed to line up close to one another. We're tipping. The penalty is against West Virginia. Penalty against the Mountaineers will bring the ball back to the four-yard line. Both teams have committed three penalties apiece. Major Harris on the option free, looking for Reggie Rembert. And overthrown is Rembert out at midfield. Ricky Turan was back on the coverage. Boy, Major really put the air under the ball on that time. I mean, that was almost 55 yards from his own end zone, 55 yards in the air against the wind. Rembert had the double coverage beat, but as you saw, the ball just a little bit too far. Don Nealon sending a play there, trying to make it all back quickly as they're hemmed into their end zone on second down and 10 from the four. Under Johnson, ahead to the 11-yard line. Under Johnson, carries the football for the Mountaineers. Brian Haywood coming over to make the stop. At the onset, we told you A.B. Brown was going for his third straight 100-yard game. Well, under Johnson now is, is making a strong move towards a 100-yard afternoon. Under with 83 yards on 11 carries. Quarterback Major Harris, who comes into the ball game with a four-yard average per carry, has been held to two yards so far. On third down, Harris will take a timeout. Six minutes and ten seconds to go. First half of play. West Virginia leads it 17 to 3. Let's go, Barry! A beautiful look at a beautiful area of the country. Greenville, North Carolina. Ficklin Stadium is the site. Homecoming 1988. But so far, homecoming has not been going all that well for the home team as West Virginia leads it by 14 with six minutes and 10 seconds to go here in the second quarter of play. West Virginia is looking at a third down and three. Quarterback Major Harris forced to call a timeout there. And East Carolina set their defense up. In the second period, Georgia 17. Vanderbilt. East Carolina has won 16 of the last 17 homecoming games here. The single man in the backfield is Aaron Evans. Quick pitch. East Carolina has it read beautifully. Ryan Haywood, the rover back, and Robert Jones, number 44, were there to make the stop. You notice the momentum swing like we saw last week against Virginia Tech, Tony. So the Mountaineers can manage only seven yards on that possession. They started off from their four. Lance carry on from two yards into the end zone. This is Bynum from the 39-yard line. Slowed down by Levinas and brought down at the 45. Johnny Stroya came over to make the stop on Bynum. And the Pirates will have good field position to start this one off. Chuck Levinas having a great year on his special teams. He was named special teams champion for his effort versus Virginia Tech last week. Travis Hunter will stay in at quarterback for East Carolina. Charlie Libretto began the game, was ineffective passing, just two of ten. And Coach Art Baker put in this man, Travis Hunter, a junior from Winter Garden, Florida. Drove his club down for a field goal on his first possession. 5.29 to go here, first half of play. The ball carrier, the fullback Tim James, met there by Theron Ellis and Lonnie Brockman. Down to the 49-yard line. You mentioned Coach Art Baker. He has a wealth of experience underneath his belt, Tony. He was assistant head coach at Florida State under Bobby Bowden in 1983. 
That's Lonnie Brockman there, junior out of Pittsburgh, who was one of two Mountaineer players in his freshman class to play, was not redshirted. That's McKinney in motion. Hunter on the option. Willie Lewis thrown out of bounds. Down to the 48-yard line. Chris Herring over to make the stop along with Bo Orlando, number 22 for the West Virginia Mountaineers. A year ago, Orlando had an 84-yard interception return for a touchdown. At Mountaineer Field to set a Mountaineer Field record. Third down and four. Hunter on the quarterback draw. The ball goes over to West Virginia. It popped loose there. Travis Hunter fumbles the football. To Ron Ellis. Made the hit. Jimmy Gray comes off. And we'll have to take a look to see who came up with the football. But Jimmy Gray, with fist in hand, comes off the field. There's no doubt that this is a quarterback draw. The West Virginia University's defense objective is to get three balls, no matter if they're fumble or interceptions per game. The Ron Ellis credited with the fumble recovery for West Virginia. 4.41 to go. Mountaineers from the 46-yard line. Motion. Mike Applewhite leaving early. Procedure penalty against the Mountaineers. And this is a problem that has cropped up in the last two games, John. West Virginia played good ball penalty-wise through the first four games of the season, but it started against Virginia Tech. That's a look at Theron Ellis, number 66 for the Mountaineers, who made the fumble recovery. On first down and 15, Major Harris has the ball knocked away there by Mike Applewhite. Number 88, Michael Applewhite. Second in the team among tackles along defensive line play for East Carolina. He's a junior out of Henderson, North Carolina. Plays well in big games. He was the team's defensive player of the game against South Carolina. And last year, he had a total of 29 tackles. Jamie Lamont comes in motion. The draw play and a big hole for Hunter Johnson. The flag is down on the play. Johnson crosses down to the 42 and we've got a late hit flag as well. I think we could have some offsetting penalties here. Flag flew as the ball was snapped. And Johnson was hit out of bounds. So you've got to think you've got penalties against the Mountaineers and the Pirates. Again, Andre making a great move. He brought that ball all the way back to the left side on the sprint draw. And again, we, we mentioned about his vision, his, his ability to see the scene. Now you saw the late hit. There was no doubt about that penalty. So they've moved the ball back for the five-yard penalty, and now they'll mark it 15 yards for the late hit. And a big ball foul called against East Carolina for a personal foul. So the illegal motion penalty is a five-yarder. The late hit is a 15-yarder, so the Mountaineers gain 10 yards on the play. You think those officials would just subtract that out instead of marching up and down the field, huh, Tone? Mountaineers have a first down and 10. Inside ECU territory with 4.28 to go in the first half. And under Johnson, ahead to the 45. Met there by Anthony Thompson. Carry number. 
number 13 of the afternoon for Hundred Johnson. 88 yards for the senior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Again, Hundred Johnson gets the call. Ahead to the 43, he'll pick up two yards on the play. And the linebacker, Anthony Thompson, and Robert Jones there to make the hit on Undra. Robert Jones, a true freshman, he's at a Fort Union Military Academy in Virginia. Has plenty of talent and speed. Attendance this afternoon here at Ficklin Stadium, 33,786. That's the fourth largest crowd in Ficklin Stadium history. Thank you. So a good crowd on hand to watch this one. Third down and five. Andre Johnson will be stopped short of the first down. Andre Johnson. Again carries the football for West Virginia. That'll bring up fourth down and Johnson will take a breather. Mike Applewhite made the stop there on Andre. Brought it ahead to the 41 yard line. Bynum is back deep to return. Carry on puts up a sky ball. Robinson from the 14-yard line ahead to the 22. Lawrence Drumgoole over on the stop. You mentioned a sky ball there, Tony. The punt team's objective for Lance is to keep that ball in the air for 4.5 seconds, so the punt team will be down in cover. 27-yard punt by Carrion. He was trying to hang that one up there, but I'm sure he would like a little bit more distance than that, or at least Don Nealon would like a little bit more distance than that. Hunter stays in at quarterback. First time this afternoon, they come out of the I formation. Robert Pickett making the stop on Reggie McKinney. Five-yard pickup will bring up second down and five. There seems to be a wealth of talent in the North Carolina area with the number of uh, universities that they do have down here. Problem is there's a lot of talent, but there's too many schools. <laughs> the likes of North Carolina, North Carolina State, Wake Forest, Duke. Hunter on the option play. He is hit and knocked down behind the line of scrimmage by Mike Fox. Beautiful play there by the junior out of Akron, Ohio. Number 61, Michael Fox. An arm is all you need, and an arm is all Fox got on Travis Hunter on that play. When they're as big as this guy's arms are, there's no doubt about that. They lose a yard. That'll bring up third down and seven. Kenny in motion. Hunter looks to throw, pressure on. Al Whiting had the ball deflect off of his hand and it's caught there by Walter Wilson. A circus play gives East Carolina a first down at midfield. Number 37, Al Whiting had the ball go off of his hand and it's tipped conveniently right into split end Walter Wilson. It was good pass rush by the West Virginia defensive line. Again, hitting a quick post. The ball deflected and just a freak play. It may not have been diagram, but the Pirates will take it. Hunter again looks to throw. Ojack Davenport down to the 47 yard line. Make it the 43. Davenport's first catch of the afternoon, seventh catch of the season. No huddle by East Carolina. Hunter again, looking to go deep over the middle. As his man, Bojack Davenport, could not hold on. Preston Waters was beat on the play, and the ball just a little bit overthrown. Bojack Davenport's outstretched arm. There isn't an advantage to the offense when you run a no pedal off. When you run a no huddle offense, the defense has to stay in their base defense. 
26 seconds remain in the first half. Third down and three facing East Carolina. Davenport lines up as a wide out to the far right side. Jared Moody in motion up top. Third down and three. Hunter again looking deep, wide open. It is Moody. And they'll rule him down. They say the knee was touching. The Pirates will have the first down at the 34-yard line. 20 seconds remaining. First half of play, and the timeout has been taken by East Carolina. So the Pirates are racing against the clock, trying to add on to their three-point total here in the first half of play. What Coach Shaw will do here is he'll tell Chris Herring, the defensive captain, okay, if they come out in a no-huddle offense, we're going to call this play the first time, this play the second time. Fans, Pepsi-Cola has a special offer for you. You can order your, yourself tickets to the Syracuse-West Virginia game at a special $10 price. You'll see the special gold and blue Mountaineer fan display at participating stores for details. So for just $10, you can get yourself a ticket to watch West Virginia take on their annual rival, the Syracuse Orangemen. Mountaineers lead 17-3, to 20 seconds to go in our first half of play. To whoever holds here or to whoever succeeds here as the final seconds tick off, they will have the momentum as we head to the locker room at halftime. McKinney coming over in motion. Mountaineer showing blitz. Hunter pumps. Looking into the end zone. The ball is caught for a touchdown. Walter Wilson. Preston Waters went after the interception, and Walter Wilson comes up with the touchdown with 14 seconds to go here in the first half of play. Give credit to Travis Hunter. He puts the ball up over the top. Now it's just a one-on-one -on -one situation. Preston going to the ball. He made a loss to that ball in the air a little bit with the wind. Imperato. Going for the extra point. It is good, and it's a seven-point game with 14 seconds to go here in the first half of play. You know, we talked about that momentum factor, Tony. Ever since this young guy, Travis Hunter, has been in there, the momentum has swung in favor of the East Carolina. Yes, it has on his first possession in there. He brought the team down for a field goal and a touchdown pass there from 33 yards away. And it's a seven-point game. Let's take another look at the touchdown catch. Was there contact down there? Yeah, there was some contact down there. The left hand came sticking out there, John. Enough for an offensive interference? Well, the, the official may have thought that that was incidental from his perspective where the push really didn't uh, have any effect on the play. A moot point now as the TD counts, 17 to 10. Mountaineers expecting a squib kick here. They leave one man back and that is Eugene Napoleon. The other 10 players are situated inside the 40-yard line. Napoleon from one yard in. Final seconds of the first half. Eugene up ahead to the 25-yard line. Clock will stop with seven seconds to go. Art Baker's gonna go in at halftime and tell his team, hey, you guys can play with these Mountaineers. And then they're gonna start believing it. In a game like this, the longer you let this type team hang in there with you, the more difficult it is for you to win. Don Nealon speaking with the official along the West Virginia sideline. I mean, Jesus Christ. And I can guarantee you the coach is not praising the job the official's been doing this afternoon. Not that they've been doing a bad job, but coaches never say nice things during the course of action. Mountaineers will let the clock wind down here. 
as the first half of play will come to an end. West Virginia leads it 17-10 over the Pirates of East Carolina University. And we welcome you back to Ficklin Stadium, Greenville, North Carolina. Tony Caridi along with John Garcia. Halftime, it's the West Virginia Mountaineers on top. 17 to 10. The Mountaineers, John, had taken a 17 to nothing lead, but East Carolina came fighting right back. West Virginia's Charlie Bauman getting the Mountaineers on the scoreboard first. A 49-yard field goal, followed by a Major Harris touchdown throw to a guy that really wasn't figured to do much coming into this game by the name of Adrian Moss. Adrian Moss on a drag pattern across the middle is certainly unaware that he's even going to get the ball, I feel. The big guy, 250 pounds, running into the end zone. First touchdown in his career for Adrian Moss. Late in the first half of play, the East Carolina Pirates came back with reserve quarterback Travis Hunter in there. Throws the ball into the end zone looking for Walter Wilson. Preston Waters back on the coverage. This one may have got caught up there on the win. Nonetheless, wind or without, Will Walter Wilson had himself a touchdown, and East Carolina scores 10 straight unanswered points, and at halftime, it's 17 to 10 West Virginia. What can we look forward to in the second half of play? The Mountaineers seem to be uh, playing all right, but not great. We need to establish that momentum, Tony. Uh, Travis Hunter came out and did a good job and got his team fired up and ready to play some ball. Coach Nealon has to regroup and come out and execute. Stay tuned, the second half coming your way, West Virginia 17 and the East Carolina Pirates 10.